<laughs> yeah, we're live. Um, it is four o'clock, four o two to be exact. I was out today. Went to watch my son, which was awesome. Uh, they played an amazing game of soccer today. Played a, a very, very top team. We were a little concerned <laughs> going to the game, having played this particular uh, club before um, at different levels with different with uh, different teams that he played on. And these guys were always like super top notch and this game ended in a one, one tie and they had to go to um, penalty kicks <laughs> to win the game. And not... my son's team ended up winning. It was awesome. Their, their goalie uh, stopped a couple of the PKs on the other side. It was, um, it was a real nail, nail biter. It was, it was good. There's there red cards and yellow cards, all, all kinds of stuff. It was, it was very exciting, but today we're not talking about that today. We are talking about long tube headers, and which one is better on an LS? Is, is it better to put inch and three quarter headers on your LS? Is it better to put inch and seven eighths headers on your LS? And then I also tested collector extension lengths to see what effect they have on power. If we actually put, a lot of times when we run these engines on the dyno, we put long tube headers on them and we almost always put some sort of collector extension. The only time I ever run just an open header, we, we very rarely would do that. But if I do, it's just to demonstrate what a collector extension does, because it usually adds a pretty good bit of power. And typically what happens is it adds power, a, a lot of power down low and has no effect on power up top. It just continues to make the same good power that it did before with just an open header. It just adds a whole bunch of power down low. So what, but what I did on this test is we compared inch and seven eighths headers versus inch and three quarter headers on a five seven LS1. And, and, and technically speaking, it was a 5.3, but a board over a big bore 5.3. So it was a, it displaced 500 or 5.7 liters. We had the 219 cam that I have for sale that if, if guys are interested in that, um, I, I have those available. So let me know. I'll put my email up here if you guys are interested. Uh, we also tested this with the uh, version of the truck Norris. So the and I have a, I have a couple of those available for sale, so please let me know. But the the reason I bring that up is because we ran this same test with two different cam profiles, and that's important because we know that cam timing and ex exhaust pulses and scavenging all the and and you know intake uh, reflected waves and reversion all that stuff's linked. So when you change something, when you change the initiation of these waves, you would change essentially the effectiveness of the header in this case that we're talking about. You know, you can change that on your combination. So it's interesting to get more than just one uh, view using different cam timings. And we did that on both of them. So it's very, very cool. But we ran inch and three quarter headers and, and compared it to a set of inch and seven eighths headers. Both of those had the same collector extension on because they had the same they had the same collector diameter. Both of them were three inches. And then what I did is after we had run the inch and three quarter headers with the collector extension, what I then is then did is put a longer collector extension and a muffler on it. So the longer collector extension, the total length of the, the longer collector extension and the muffler. Now this was a straight through free flow turbo muffler from the guys at Magnaflow. So it's a, in terms of flow, it's a good one. So really the changes that we're seeing here are not so much from a change in flow, but really they're from a change. And when we talk about where we saw the power gain, you'll, you'll understand why, where we saw the power gain really has nothing to do with, Oh, muffler shirt power. We want it to be open. These, these are open. These, these work as well as, as, as open mufflers and, and, and make power accordingly. So when we ran this thing, with that 219 cam, this, uh, we'll take a look at the rest of the description here. It had forged pistons and rods, stock crank. It had uh, a set of RHS aluminum heads on it, ported heads on it. It had the truck intake manifold. And we ran this. How high did we run this thing to? 60... 65, 6600, which is kind of where it was there. All of these made peak power at 6300 with this particular camshaft. Didn't didn't really fall off um, as we went a little bit past that. But but you know that that's essentially where the power peak is. Sometimes when you're looking for power peaks on these things, in in our case, like let's say let's say it makes 480 horsepower. Well, two or 300 RPM past that, it might be 
479 or 478 or something. So it's not falling off dramatically, but that's officially where the horsepower peak is. To me, that's still kind of a flat section. It's a plateau, a horse, a horsepower plateau rather than a peak. But technically speaking, because that's the biggest number that we see uh, in our printout, that, that's where that's where it occurred. But so running this thing with inch and seven eighths headers, we made 482 horsepower at 6,300 RPM and then 462 foot-pounds at 4,700 RPM. Then, and this was with the inch and seven-eighths headers with collector extensions. Then we took those off, put inch and three-quarter headers on with the same collector extensions. It made 479 horsepower, so three horsepower difference, and 463 foot-pounds, so one more foot-pound, although I think that I've rounded because of the decimal points on both of these, so you know, it's almost nothing, but that doesn't mean there wasn't a big change in the power output. There definitely was a big change in the power output. And if you look at it, you guys won't be able to see it, unfortunately, but I, but I will be able to tell you about it in detail. So we can talk about where this thing So on the on the changing over to the smaller inch and three quarter headers, we see that we only had uh, three horsepower difference in the peak, and and if anything, one one foot pound more of torque. But this thing was up by the smaller header was up by sixteen foot pounds of torque down low, specifically at twenty seven hundred RPM. But the inch and inch and three quarter header was better from twenty four hundred. To 3,200 RPM, so down in a low, down in the low RPM range, and and honestly, if guys are talking about it below that point, because we loaded this thing at 2,100 RPM, below that, the larger header was actually a touch better. I don't put a lot of faith in the initial load in number. Like I'd like to load this thing at you know 600 RPM, like everybody wants, and have it transition through this, because then it might give me a little bit better idea. But if anything, the bigger header was as good or better down below that point, like down below 22 or 2300 RPM. From there on out, it's basically exactly the same. I mean, the peak torque, like I said, varied between a decimal point of one horsepower, which is in the, which is within the range of the margin of error of running one run to another because of a change that you might have in oil temperature or water temperature, that kind of thing. So really the header change is, you know, th these things just overlaid from 33 or 3400 all the way out to almost 6,000 where the bigger header just eked ahead just a little bit by like two or three horsepower. So the thing that you don't see other than the big change, other than the 16 foot pounds down low from the smaller header, you don't really see anything big. You would definitely notice that from behind the wheel. I mean, it would be much better it would not feel quite like a torque converter change, <laughs> but it would have better drivability because of that RPM range. Um, you'd notice the difference, but more than likely, unless this thing got a better 60 foot time, um, the performance would be the same between these headers. What you don't see going from an inch and three quarter to an inch and seven eighths headers, and I've never seen this other than changes, like I said, in very specific RPM ranges, usually down low. I don't see huge power gains. I've never seen 20, 30 horsepower that sometimes people talk about going for, oh yeah, you need to put an inch and seven eighths header on. You'll make a ton more power. I've never seen that in any of the testing that we've done. But we did see another big gain when we went from just having a collector extension length, which is about this long, about yay long. And then we put a 40 inch one. So we went from 18 or 20 inches to doubling that to 40 or 42 inches. And then it included the muffler. And that definitely had a change in, in power. So now we're kind of comparing it to the. So now we'll compare it because we have the inch and three quarter header with just a collector extension and the inch and three quarter header with the muffler and, and the longer collector extension. Again, we see another big jump in low speed power. So from 2,200 RPM all the way out to 3,600 RPM, the longer collector extension added power. It, it was up by 15 or 16 foot-pounds, again, at 2,700 RPM. <laughs> but all the way through that range, the longer section was much better. 
from 3,700, uh, interestingly enough, from 3,700 to 4,600, the longer extension was down a little bit, down by about six foot pounds. The, the biggest dip was six foot pounds. It, for most of it, it was less than that, but there was a slight dip in, in power there. Then basically the same, except out at the very, very top, like out at 64, 64, uh, 64, 6,500 RPM, there was an increase of about three horsepower, maybe from not having the muffler on there. So just the collector extension and not having the length of tubing. So what we see again, we see very little happening from oh, 47 or 4,800 on out. Very, very, very little change. The stuff below that, we see a fairly big change in that tubing length. Um, that's not a flow thing. <laughs> that's a resonance frequency thing. That's a scavenging thing. And so otherwise we wouldn't see the gain and then the loss and then, then the same after that. Um, a lot of people uh, will tend to look at mufflers and go, oh yeah, they, they hurt flow. They restrict flow. They, they lose power. If that were the case, what we'd see is a huge change in power, like out on the big end, you'd see a big change in peak horsepower, but that's not what's happening. So obviously the, the length of tubing, the size of tubing and the muffler all flow enough to easily support this, this level of power. I mean, we're talking about 480 horsepower. They, they all support that much power. They'll support the flow that's associated with that. But <laughs> odd things are happening. Reflected wave scavenging effects are happening from this change in length. Now the question is, and this will be the, this will be our poll. Okay, so the question is, did the muffler itself produce some form of scavenging compared to just having a length of tubing that would be the same as that muffler? So is there something weird happening that the muffler is doing, you know, a, a resonance frequency from the volume? Um, you know, did it is a turbo muffler, <laughs> so it acts as a turbocharger, right? As we all know, but did the muffler itself produce some form of scavenging compared to just the change in length? Who thinks that the muffler did something that it would be different if we just put a length of tubing there and made the tubing the same length? Let me know. Let me know in the comments, and we'll see what you guys got going on for today. It is Sunday, 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 fun day. I can't wait to hear the results. This is good stuff. Like I live and breathe this kind of stuff. This is really cool stuff to find out. And headers, other than being <laughs> you know, having to wait till they cool off because they're super hot and the mufflers are very hot too. Also, other than having to wait to, for them to cool off, it's it's an easy test because it's all an external bolt on. It just, you know, you just zip that thing off and zip it back on. It's nice. One and three quarter under 400 horsepower. Yeah, see, that's... I... And, and I would have agreed with that initially uh, long ago, but I don't, I don't believe that that's the thing. What about one and a half versus one and five eighths on a small block? I don't know that I would ever run inch and a half headers on a 350 inch motor. I think that bare minimum that I would put on would be inch and five eighths. And we normally run inch and three quarter stuff only because that's what we have and it's easy to bolt on. Lyndon, waiting on my inch and seven eighths to be delivered for my twin turbo setup. I had inch and three quarter. Do you think that that's going to do something? I'm, I'm curious to see. I mean, I, you're probably making a lot of power, but I would be curious to see. And on a, is that on a big block or is it on an LS? Turbo Sentra 350 is running. It has 60 PSL of oil pressure cranking. That's good. So what, what will be interesting and re the, really the telling thing about the oil pressure is what is the oil pressure at idle after this thing warms up? <laughs> Run the headers that you have. That's another way to go about it. Depends on the size and or output of the engine. Too small, you're restricting it. Too large, you lose velocity. Again, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that that's it. 
We we run the same headers on like for small block Chevys. West Tech essentially has. I mean, they have lots of sets of headers, but the ones that they normally run go on every small block. They go on a 283, they go on a 383, they go on a 483, whatever size small block you have, and they go on power outputs ranging from, I'm sure that they've maybe done something less than the 229 horsepower V8 that I've run there. Maybe they've run something smaller than that. But from there all the way up to 600 plus, you know, NA small blocks that they've run on there. I have an LS1 6L80 converted to 58X. I got a milled head, parted and polished, 235, 240 cam, 178, one, one inch and 7.8 headers. What intake manifold do you have on there? And does that cam fit? Do you have a stock bottom end? Thunderstorm Colorado. Are you guys having big uh, storms out there? Does tube diameter affect EGT or any other readings? I don't know if we took EGTs on this, but I, I would doubt very seriously that it does. I'd like to see how it would affect output running dual three inch and then a single four inch. So you want to merge the two three inches into a four inch? Richard, how do you stock LS coil packs? How do, um, okay, how do stock LS coil packs work on turbo applications? Thanks for helping out in the garage, working on the old 57 Dodge Town Wagon. Well, if it helps you out, the on the Big Bang motor that made 1,540 horsepower, we had stock coil packs on it. We had stock LS3 coil packs on it. And I've used those on almost every turbo motor that I've run. And, and the same ones. <laughs> so they've lasted a long time. Good scavenging equals good horsepower. It is, there's a lot there. What about those pipes on a 289 or a 302 Windsor small block, bigger or smaller? I, we normally go, I ran most of the small block stuff that I ran with inch and five eighths headers because that's what Hooker sent us. We might have a set of inch and three quarters. And I, and I would like to test that and see to, uh, to see what the, you know, what there is, a, if there's a big difference between those two. And also this, there's something else that we need to think about. We're, we're talking about this as though it's some kind of absolute an inch and three quarter versus inch and seven eighths. These weren't the same header, but just a change in primary diameter. There were other changes in these headers too. They're just the headers that we had. One of them happened to be inch and seven eighths, and then one of them happened to be inch and three quarters. But they're definitely different. I'm sure that the primary lengths are different. I don't, I don't even have the measurements on them, but I'm sure there are differences there as well. With boost, is it less important? I think it's less important on the... I, I wouldn't be worried about the scavenging effect of primary diameter size on on a turbo motor because you're again you're talking about the differences here you i don't think you get the, that kind of difference when you're doing the change on a turbo motor because you're never running a full length header out to a muffler and then running it back to a turbo to get these kind of changes you're always running just the header into the turbo i think the biggest arguments i hear is how much torque you lose in the lower rpm range for your daily driving what what do you lose? Do, do you lose it when you put a big header on it? Is that what you're talking about? I, actually, if anything, the engine seven eight header seemed to be better. But at the very at very low RPM, like at, at twenty two hundred or something. But the we don't what we don't see there on the engine dyno is that we don't see part throttle stuff. I wonder if the exhaust design plays a bigger role in the seat of the pants feel. Yeah, or tune, you know, converter gearing all that. Uh oh, Robert hit a deer in my van, blew out a brake line, discovered my control arm was rusted through while <laughs> fixing it. Today. That's a lot of stuff. I uh, hope you're okay, though. A deer is, they're heavy, they're big and heavy. They can do a lot of damage. That seems to support that any engines benefit from back pressure. They don't benefit from back pressure. That's a myth. You do not want back pressure. That's my first V8 to build, and it started on the first crank. Unlike my center engine, it never started the first time or the third time. It, it is nice when you put it all together and you fire it up and it works. That happens sometimes, not every time. It happens sometimes when we're on the dyno that we hook everything up and go, okay. Like if a carbureted mar carburetor motors, I think more than the EFI motors tend to start right off the bat. Um you just give it two cracks of fuel and then hit the starter. And it usually the, the carburetor stuff fires right up. 
as long as we remember to hook up the coil wire and to plug in the MSD, usually that fires up. Even if the timing is way off, it it could be it could be you know and it could be zero degrees, it could be forty degrees. It, it still fires up. It's not as happy as it will be once once we get the timing dialed in, but usually it fires up. New Mustangs automatically break for kangaroos. <laughs> they probably break for deer as well. Do they have the sensors up front? Do they have the kangaroo sensor? Let's see. Okay, does the shape of the collector extension make any difference? Yes. Um, Merge collectors definitely affect power. Say straight, three-inch pipe. 20 inch length versus 180 curved one. So you, you want to make a 180 degree U bend off of the collector, right? That, that would be unusual. Would you ever consider running a front mount intercooler into a second air to water? manifold mount intercooler yeah we've done that already on the on the compound deal that we did that i did with jimmy and nathan at hp performance when they ran the twin turbos going into the supercharger the supercharger had a factory air to water intercooler under the blower and then they also had the two turbos blowing into an air to air intercooler and then that went into the blower and we've run twin intercoolers twin or cooled i call it on on a bonneville volkswagen too if it's turbo muffler, it's basically straight through. This one was, yeah, not all of them are. Some of them go in one side and come out the other side. Some of them are convoluted inside. The turbo muffler is is more or less a shape of muffler, the oval muffler. Um, and, and it comes from, I think, the, the, the Corvair turbo had that style muffler, I think is where that originated. But this was just a straight through kind of race muffler. If it's a turbo muffler, it's basically straight through. Yes, yeah. So it approximates a straight piece of pipe. Yeah, it does have it does have corrugation in the tubing, and then it has volume in the muffler that stuff could get into and and change something theoretically. It's not just a section of tube with a muffler case around it. Great information. Thanks for all the testing. Appreciate all your information. It's always backed up by data. I'm usually just talking to you about data. I very rarely do I talk to you about opinion. Not sure. Six liter LS in my boat, 1500 horsepower. Yeah, I think that when we ran ours, I think that I'd, I'd need to measure that, Linda. Now that I now that I think about it, I can't remember what those DNA uh, offshore turbo mufflers are because that's what we ran, and I, I'm not a big fan of those. I, I the the Hooker or Holly ones are much better. Not their cast ones, but their tubular ones because they they did a much better job allowing access to park, spark plugs and wires because turbo guys are going to want to get access to that and not burn them. Need the rocker rails for LS. Good luck finding the OM units. The rocker stands, you can't find any of those? I think pack mufflers like MagnaFlow will have a scavenging effect, but mufflers like Flowmasters will not because they have baffles. It's interesting. Does the diameter of the header primer make a difference on a turbo header? I, I don't know. I, I haven't done enough testing on that. And I and I think if it did, I, I think it I think that, that particular thing would be um, a function of power output. Because on a turbo application, we're talking about exhaust flow. Although I still don't understand how we're able to get away with the things we get away with on these boosted things. Factory sealed, going to be cracked open 307 small block, 307 small block, 80,000 miles. Should have which diameter pipe for optimum? Is the, the 307s all stock? It's a stock two barrel 307. Did I miss the horsepower rating on a test engine? The cubic inch was a 5.7. It was an LS1 displacement. And it made 480 horsepower or so. The 
change type affects EGR, the leaner, the hotter. The it, but the air fill and the timing were exactly the same. That's why I don't think that there'll be a change in, e, in um, EGTs. Any downfall to running small diameter headers when it's a short header into a twin turbo LS? Yeah, you're not going to, it's not going to be too small. I don't know anybody that makes a real small diameter header. It's probably going to be inch and three quarter. And quite honestly, for what most people are doing with a, a turbo LS, uh, especially a twin turbo deal, um, you're going to be making enough power with the turbos anyway. My father and I clean water intakes for municipalities using a system he developed pushing water backward out the intake using velocity and people confuse velocity with pressure. 1,543 horsepower on the Big Bang. That's right. Test with the big boy cam, and you'll see the difference. When you get to a point, you only need so much flow. The rest is just a sound change. You absolutely can get big gains if you need more breathing. I, I've run these header tests on lo lots of high horsepower stuff. I think more air in with turbos, the more air out. Back pressure is bad. It is. Three-inch exhaust on a stock four-banger, pretty useless in terms of power. We ran a three and a half or four inch exhaust on our Bonneville Civic. And it was oval so that it was very aero. I have two inch primaries, four inch collectors, four inch exhaust on my small black Chevy. Okay. Uh, should we be adding extension pipes like on two strokes on the exhaust before the axle back twin turbos? You, you already have extensions from the header going to the turbos. I don't understand. Have you ever tested a TSP Mad Max cam? I don't think I have. But if you told me what the specs are, we've probably tested something that's really close. Not enough room in a 911. Yep. Let's say an inch and seven eight header is a waste on any truck Norris build. It's pretty decent on inch and three quarter. That can be plenty happy with engine five eights. Like like I said, that's why we test it so that we we know what the reality is. And there was, there was almost no change in power other than making more low speed power between the inch and three quarter and the inch and seven eighths. What is the correct answer to the poll? I don't know. I, I know what my opinion is and I can give you that. I, I think if we were to put a section of tubing in there, I think you'd see exactly the same thing. But... I, I would be willing to test it and and say, oh look, that's cool. The, the muffler did something, but I don't. I don't. Maybe I'm not an acoustics expert. I, I don't see how it would change it. But it's seven eighths up and forward into two and a half inch hot side feeding twin S three sixty sixes on a four forty LS two inch back pressure point nine one AR. Mm -hmm. No, it depends on what power level, what kind of power level are you doing? I don't know why you'd be worried about the inch and seven eighths if you have a, if you have a two inch um, hot side, but you're, you're feeding the um, twin 366s. Are you trying to just make a thousand horsepower or something? And, and, and a nine one AR uh, is fine for twins. People run three inch duels on muscle cars with 300 horsepower doesn't mean you need it. Yep. No, I agree with that. We did a test on an LS that was 550 horsepower or so. And we did the headers with a three inch exhaust and, and these mufflers. And then we did a complete uh, header and a complete two and a half inch exhaust with the cat back and all that stuff. 
And I think it was 10 horsepower difference between those. What I was getting at before with the exhaust flow is a boundary layer where the lube, the muffler louvering is so it doesn't affect the main central exhaust. I, I'm not sure that that's the case though. I mean, I know what, I know what a boundary layer is and a boundary layer um, works on a solid surface, but I don't know that it does the same thing on a, on a, a chamfered or a louvered surface. And, and also, even if the flow did that, what we're talking about is not really just flow. Um, we need to think past that. Because what we're seeing here is the in the scavenging effect is not flow. We're seeing pressure waves. So I don't know if the resonating volume of the plenum of the muffler does something um, that changes the flow or sends waves back or forward. Um, that's what I'm wondering about. A dual 2.5 inch will happily flow 500 horsepower. Yeah, like I said, we were at 550 and it was worth about 12 horsepower going to a 3 inch. Rocker stands sold out and don't know when they will come back in stock. I had to get some aftermarket units. The If they're just stock ones, why? I mean, there's like hundreds of them at the wrecking yard. You got to modify them for aftermarket heads, but I'll put a breather oil catch can on my 5.3. I have a lot of mist vapor coming from the breather. I'm going to run the oil cat, catch can. It's just water that comes out. Is that normal? Well, if you have condensation and it goes into a breather, um, it will turn back into water. I have engine seven eighths headers and a four inch exhaust going over the axle. After the information you provided, it doesn't seem like I'm going to lose any power versus inch and three quarter into three inch. Is what what is the Devin? What is the power output? Did I miss that? Were you talking about that earlier? What is the application in the power output? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Robert, I got the mist. <laughs> That's fine. What size turbo for an LY6 on a truck towing application, stock engine, interested in torque and towing power? Uh, you could put a GT45 on there and with a stock cam and all that. Are you, are you going to do it with the VVT cam in there? I looked all over the internet and muffler design. And finally, I cut one apart that you wanted and you copied it. Okay. Get away. What's going on? Prestige is in the house with modular power. Seven thousand RPM shift point three three small block Chevy saw a tenth and ET going from inch and three quarter to inch and seven eighths. What what is that a tenth like a, a <laughs> ten ninety to a ten eighty or is it a fourteen thirty to a fourteen twenty? One hundred twenty five cc motorcycle engine. Okay, I just found out the valve cover is leaking on the backside. Bad valve cover. I don't know the Chevy stuff. If it's a small block Chevy, usually the factory ones are stamped steel. And so you got to make sure that the bolts are all tight. We like to use the, the thing that works really well is we put studs in there. We, we lock tight studs in there and then put nylocks on it. That tends to hold them. But the other thing that happens with them is a lot of the Chevy valve covers, because they're stamped steel, there's actually a, um, a, a spreader or a giant flat washer. <laughs> I forgot what they're called, expanders or something. Um, they go on there and they go on the uh, under the bolt or the stud. And then when you tighten it down, it just adds, you know, more surface area load to it and helps clamp it. So you might look at that too. Richard, carburetor LS is gaining popularity. Have you done cam tests with, with cams larger than sloppy and Trek Norris for carbs? Yeah, uh, yes, the, the all of the cams that work with an EFI motor on an LS work on a carbureted motor. N none of that changes. Ta if you take a look at the big LS3 uh, intake manifold test that I did, I ran it carbureted. So there's lots, there's a stroker and big cams on that one and, and lots of carbureted stuff, including dominator stuff. TSP Mad Max cam is a 228, 232, 550, 110 plus five. Uh, I've run 228 cams before. But I have not run that one. Uh, 
but a three inch dual exhaust with crossover make torque from stoplight without hurting top end. Big fan of Flowmaster Muffer. What what application is this on? Would like to make 1200 to 1400 with twin S 366s. Uh, I don't, I'd have to ask um, Viren, but maybe the 366s will do 700. That seems like a lot. I take the breather filler off the oil catch can while the truck is idling. It looks like a steady stream of mist coming off the top of the oil catch can. Um, when you take the valve cover off, is there a bunch of water in there? Um, it could be a number of things. It could be um, uh, a cracked head, <laughs> a cracked block. Um, sometimes the could be a bad head gasket, I guess. Um, sometimes the, although I haven't seen it on stock heads, I've seen it on some aftermarket heads where the um, head starts leaking where the head bolt or head stud is. I've seen that crack and leak water. We've seen water come up when you, sometimes guys will hydro the bolt hole because um, they zip the bolts in with an impact and it has oil in it and they just, destroy the whole, they just blow out the bottom of the hole and then water gets in and water will come up the head bolt. I've seen that. What else once I got with this engine had cracks in the ends of several mount points. So trying to find good units that aren't cracked. Maybe the change in direction of the tubing, if one has less sharp turns, would it scavenge better? I don't, I, uh, Frank, I'm lost on where you were before. I don't know what the previous question was. You're gonna use your VVT cams? Okay, I don't think I've ever, I've never run a turbo with a VVT cam. I don't know about the tuning on that. 1080 to 1070. That's a that's a big change then. A, a tenth there, did, did it, it had to have changed the mile an hour too then. Have you tested the power squeeze torque tube supposedly fits inside the header collector? Claims gain in low speed torque without loss of horsepower and torque in the top end. I've never heard of that. I wish would somebody would send me a, or I guess I can take a look at that and see. Power squeeze torque tube. I'd like to see this magic thing that people are talking about. I wrote it down. Will L17 closed chamber domes fit the modern CNC style 110 to 112 chambers? I don't know. I You'll have to try it and see. Um, it's not unusual to have to trim domes on chambers. We have to do that on airflow research heads. They're pretty common for for uh, a lot of the dome designs from the piston manufacturers. You have to machine the dome. Going from cast iron exhaust manifolds to headers adds power everywhere normally. Would headers be preferred for turbo setups or would cast manifolds hurt performance? Um, I don't know how much gain you get from headers. You don't get the same scavenging effect because you're not running the same length of tubing behind the header on the turbo. Um, there are some exhaust manifolds. If we just talk about flow and not scavenging, there are some headers that flow better than stock manifolds. The Dodge Ram manifolds are a perfect example. Those manifolds flow terribly and they're, they're, they're down in power everywhere compared to any kind of turbo, which shows me that they're, <laughs> and the, and the gain that you get from headers shows me that those manifolds don't flow very well. So there are going to be some applications where that's the case. People looking for the extra power from scavenging from a header for turbo, they need to be worried about the big part of what they're doing and not the, that that's a little part. Stop 
stock 2003-53. I plan on building up later. So far, all stock 310 horsepower, the VVT stock cam. I have inch and seven eighths on my 12 Silverado. People used to tell me they're too big for the 5.3. Uh, yes, you're, you're 11 and a half to one flat top. What 408? Do you have a small chamber on the head for that? Do you have a 248, 256 cam? That's a lot of camshaft. And you're running on E85. Yeah, I'll be fine for supercharging it. Did you ever build a race mower to play with? Like a like a lawnmower? I don't I don't think I know enough about those. I haven't gone down that rabbit hole. Are you doing Mr. Is a small header worth using on a 5.3? Is that bin blueprint i don't know what i still don't understand what your question is is your question should i use a header on an ls we've shown that the answer is always yes it always makes more power than stock stuff todd you're working on an 87 corvette okay tune port motor aluminum headed tune port motor probably have some Factory hydraulic roller cams, I would think. Some small ones. So, Eddie, you're a boosted cam guy, too? Waiting for Amazon. Dropping a new intake plate to remove the 6 liter. You're attaching it to the intake manifold? Four at Windsor, RHS 180 heads, medium size cam, 11 and a half to one, RPM air gap, inch and a half primary, and two and a half inch collectors. How much power do you think is left on the table with those small headers? Um, I, I think I would definitely have, you have an inch and a half primaries? I, that's too small for a 408. Richard, daily car repair. Richard, intake question. I have a 402 LS plus 8cc, so it's a small dome piston, 243s, 60cc chambers, bald eagle twin turbo stroker cam, 11 to 1 compression, NA for now. I don't know what the specs are on that camshaft. So you need to tell me what kind of cam that is so that I could tell you what kind of RPM range that you would want to run. And then which um, a Trinity and a low Ram are going to be very high RPM intake manifolds. And if you have stock 243s, you're, you're not, it's not going to run out there because there's not enough airflow for, for a 402 on a stock 243 head. In place of the manifold. Okay. I need to. Uh, I need to email you about the LS9 cam. Scrolling back. Oh. Uh, I don't know what intake manifold is on that. If it's NA. I need to know the intake before I can tell you what kind of power it'll make. Scott, it does turn by itself. That's extra power then, right? That makes it a... A hybrid. Would a BMW ZF transmission handle the torque of a big block or an LS? For a while, not very long though. Not if you're not if you're speed shifting. You're you're gonna run an LSA supercharger on the high compression 402. Then the power out. Oh no, wait. Let me see. 
then the power output is going to be dictated by the blower. I don't know how much power that blower will make. I don't know what guys are making. Is the is the supercharger all stock? It's not ported. Does it have a big inlet on it or anything? You can put the torque converter in, but the electronics are pretty important. I would think so. Out of all the testing you do, how have you not pulled the head bolt threads out of an aluminum block? Out of an aluminum LS block? We don't, I don't over torque those. I have done it on a, um, I've done it on a, um, I've damaged the threads on the bolt holes that hold the cam retaining plate on aluminum block. And on a Honda block, I have pulled the threads out of a Honda block um, because I put, this is way, this goes way back, but I had put um, the ARP um, lubricant on both sides of the washers before I realized that they had changed the design of their washer. And so I went to torque it in it and, and, and most of them torqued. One of them didn't torque and, and it did, it just pulled the threads out. So I have done that before. Richard, do you have anything else other than cams? Uh, probably have some stuff down there. Richard, will you be needing my Holly Terminator? Well, that's up to you. Uh, I don't know if the harness is the same on the Terminator. I don't have a Terminator. We have an HP is what I use. Talk about a manual six-speed. Yep, I got I got that. Stock LSA blower and it's a 408. We'll be happy with 700 horsepower. I, I was thinking the 700 to 800 range. I just didn't know. I know guys have made more than that with those, but they've ported the heck out of them and put very large inlets on them. And that's what you need to do to increase the flow rate of that blower. But you have way more, you, you have 600, you should have 600 horsepower worth of, or, or more worth of um, stroker motor there. So the, <laughs> the blower is only going to add 100 horsepower or less. Heads cam LS S10 just switched up from inch and five eighths to Headman inch and three quarter long tubes, hoping to feel some gains. Sometimes it takes some tuning too to go along with that, but the rocker stands had cracks on the ends of the mounting points. The, the mounting points where the, the bolt that goes through the rocker and the, and the rocker stand, it's cracked there. Because if it's cracked out on the ends, you don't care about that. Most of the time, we just grind that off anyways. Missed the beginning of the conversation. The one of the effects were between inch and seven eighths and inch and three quarters because one of the kit swaps I'm looking at comes with inch and seven eighths. The inch and three quarters made more power down low and then made less power in the middle, and then they made the same power at the top. The inch and seven eighths made like three three more horsepower at the peak. No more peak torque, though. Shorty headers aren't worth power. Long tubes are good. Yep. Should I try to restore my old small block 350? If that's what you have, you should do what you want to do and make it better. I need a 500 lift small block cam. Like a flat tap of small block cam or a hydraulic roller. Did the muffler itself produce some form of scavenging compared to just a change in length? 55% are saying yes. Where the bolts and trunnions mount at? Not going to. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, if it's if it's cracked there, you don't want to bolt that down and have the thing, you know, separate because it's got a crack in it. I've never seen those crack before. We just, I, I got a bunch of them. We just throw them around in the boxes. <laughs> but I have taken, I have taken apart my share of junkyard LS motors though. 
uh, Mohammed, we don't use the word thoughts here, man. You've been coming here a while now. You got to know that. I don't answer thoughts questions. That's too generic. So rephrase. Now I want to test a bunch of mufflers. It would be basically the effect of the uh, keglodon, but but blowing into the keglodon from the, with the exhaust. I think the five three that was made five seven might have some corrosion. Do coatings help in any way with power or just heat management? Coatings definitely help internally. Piston coatings and stuff, uh, most of the professional levels of, of uh, engine builders for NASCAR and, and Australian supercar and all, all the IndyCar and, and Formula One, all that stuff, they all use them. So obviously they work. Um, I don't know about the coatings for headers and exhaust. Definitely heat management. And, and, and maybe there could be an argument that you could get possibly improved spool rate, but I just don't know. I, I, I want to say from an engineering standpoint, it should help. But the thing is, I don't know about the reality standpoint. So yeah, you, you, you stop some of the heat from coming out of the header, radiating out of the header by keeping it in, inside. How much of that, like what is the percentage that you lose? And are you losing a percentage that doesn't make any difference? Because that's way more than it needs anyways. You know, once the motor is up to temperature and the exhaust is up to temperature, the amount that you're radiating, you know, you might be radiating 10%, but it's already got 50% more than it needs, 50% more heat energy than it needs to get the job done. So you see what I'm talking about. I just don't know what that number is. <laughs> Muhammad gets a timeout. No, nah, nobody gets timeouts. Our main girl is good for enforcing the block. On what application? The reason I ask is because on a five liter Ford, people put main girdles on them and that can help, but that's not where the block splits on a five liter. On other applications like the factory Honda GSR has a main girdle and I think it's a good idea. And, and it would definitely add more strength. But the other thing is, like we talked about with the five liter Ford, that's a good example is, is, is that the problem? So like you, you go, well, okay, I want to do a main girdle because that's going to, that's going to add structure to this. Well, that's great, but maybe that's not the part that's going to break. Maybe there are other issues somewhere else. Are you using stock connecting rods? <laughs> Cause connecting rods going to break like 3000 horsepower before the, the main girdle, like, comes into play. So, you know, look at the thing that you need to look at first and then look at the other stuff. Try testing the Spintex 3 inch 6000 or 9000 series mufflers. What's the difference in a low rise carb single plane versus a high rise or is it more about moving the power band to your needs? N no, they don't I, I can't say universally because there's no low rise and high rise universalness. I can tell you that I've tested a Victor Jr. versus a Torker and a Torker 2 that the Torker 2 makes less power than a Victor Jr. does. Um, Todd, we can still give you the file, the program, so you can put all the information into your into yours. Might take those new rails into the shop and acid etch and aldine them to improve fault <laughs> resistance. There's if somebody broke those, it, it's because they were loose or they tried to tighten them onto something and, and an irregular surface and broke them. They didn't break because there's a, a structure problem there. They honestly don't have very much load on them. Building a very mild 351 Windsor. Do I even bother with inch and three quarter? Just go right to inch and seven eighths, possibly doing a stroker. If you're doing a stroker, then I would probably would put inch and seven eighths. But I, I again, I just, you're not going to see anything. But, and, and on a 351 Windsor, it's going to be different than this test was. Because are you, are you doing a factory long runner intake manifold? 
Calvin had a 4200 girdle produced, uh, or was it the North Star? I saw the one that he did. I thought it was on a 4200. <clears throat> and and Calvin might be at the running his at the level where that becomes a thing. I, I would like to see if he has any data of, of why he thinks that that's necessary. My car is a 91 Camaro stock Gen 453 with DVT. I'm running the inch and seven inch long tube headers, three inch collectors coming into a three inch wide and going to a four inch exhaust over the axle. Everyone tells you it's too big. Uh, I think you're fine. I, I I have seen Calvin's girdle. <laughs> that sounds funny though. Shout out to Calvin. LS performance does do engine seven eight long tube headers increase power on larger displacement engines like four twenty seven or four fifty four compared to engine three quarter long tubes or are the results similar? Uh, I'd have to go back and look. I have tested these. I tested them on a four twenty seven. I tested different headers on a four twenty seven. Also ran stock exhaust manifolds, and I'd want to look at that data and tell you exactly what happened because it's not going to be universal like that. It's not, oh, the bigger motor just wants bigger headers. It's it's not going to be that. It's going to be like this. It's going to be this one did this one here, and this did this here. And so I would want to give you accurate data. Get two more minutes. And here's the uh, email address. If you're interested in cams, uh, probably we'll have other stuff. I'm going to be heading down there very shortly. So it probably be, I need to get rid of some of my stuff that's in my storage. And I will be at LS Fest West, so I'll be out there. I'll have uh, I'm hoping to have T-shirts. Fingers crossed. Is so a three inch exhaust flow enough to not restrict a GT45 turbo? It's what I have on my 5.3, wondering if a th three and a half, four inch exhaust would benefit. What's, I can't remember what the outlet side of that, of that GT45 is. I, I think it's bigger than three inches, right? That's what you want, Scott, is a wrong cam t shirt. It, it's going to be appropriate because I'll have cams or two. Yep, the cams do have a, they do, they are, one of them has a really tight LSA. It's 106 and a half or 107. LS Fest is the 26th through the 28th, I think. How does LSA ignition timing vary compared to old small block Chevys? Say dialing in the MSD. Well, LS motors want less timing. Small block Chevys can want, between 36 and 40 and the LS wants makes best power at 31 on the ones on every one that we've run. Ragtop, you guys you have cutouts on your exhaust? That's kind of cool. <laughs> LS Fest is in Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. But the the LSA isn't the thing. <laughs> it's, it's the valve events. Three and a quarter, three and a half. Um, you cannot put too big of an exhaust on the outlet side of the turbo. So so, but you can put too small of one. I don't think a three inch is big enough. It, it would definitely, if you're trying to max the turbo out it would definitely restrict power on that turbo. So whenever we run it, I'm sure we run at least a three and a half on there. Cause I think the exhausts I have for the turbos are, we have three inch, but I don't know. I don't remember what we run that on. Maybe on that little 
to CX Racings or some of the smaller ones. Um, we have three and a half. We have four. I think we have four and a half also. Robot Cantina Supercharged Kubota Powered Honda Insight. Yep. Can you use cutouts outside to turn on and off a turbo? Yeah, if you if you decrease the exhaust flow to the turbo, it will it will it's like opening the wastegate. My friend John and I will be in Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. So we'll close out our poll at 55% saying, yes, we've got some muffler scavenging. So tomorrow I have to call on. So what, what size shirt should I get? What, what are the sizes that I should concentrate on? Probably not small. We just carbon fiber internals. Yeah. Every, every once in a while people post that stuff. Uh, Mohammed, that's that's the four bolt main isn't the problem with that. It's the block structure, so that's not going to save you. I don't know if that's going to get you a little farther, but XL, two XL, medium large XL, long shirts. Make them long for coverage. Well, hello. How are you doing? Uh huh. You come to visit? Come on up. Come on. You get up here, huh? You get. You look like you just woke up. Yeah. Are you snoring already? Huh? Hello. Well, come on up here. Come on up and say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, sweet. I know. I'll come down in just a second. I know. It's it's time, huh? It's time to sit in front of the fire or something. Well, come up here. Come here. I know. Hello. Hello. Okay, I'll be off in just a second. Carbon fiber pistons and connecting rods. Yes, that, that's all. That's all good. Yep, that's that's Brady. Hi, huh, Brady. Okay, go go lay down. Go. Hello, hello. Okay, hello. I know. Okay, go go find your brother. He snuck in. <laughs> yeah, he's really good. Him and his brother both, and then their big brother Milo, their older brother. Yeah, they, they have gotten big. They're a, they're a year old now, so they're getting they're getting bigger and more rambunctious. They have all the energy and the silliness of puppies. They just have bigger bodies. Connecting rods. <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen carbon fiber connecting rods. I've seen a lot of people. The um, four piston guys posted something on that the other day. They're like, I can't believe that people are falling for this. Uh, Todd, I was actually just, I was up by you today, I think, if I remember right. Um, we were in, uh, the team that my son played was, hey, Owen, who did you guys play today? I know, but what, what, what town were we in? Oh, we were, we were up in Elk Grove. Uh, Dustin, I put my email in, in the did I put my I did. Yeah, my email is in the comments. Did you test the LSA supercharger on, on different Gen 3 or 4 engines? I've never run an LSA supercharger. <clears throat> so the newer block structure is not good enough for that power. I can't find the old block anywhere. The the EFI blocks, nobody uses those for, for that power level. They all use the older blocks. And for when you're getting up near 900 or 1,000 horsepower, they're using aftermarket blocks for 460s. <laughs> I bring the pups to Vegas. That would be way too much. <laughs> that would be too, too much. And on that note, it is time to go, but I'll... Well, I, if I came back on at seven, it would be just in a few minutes, actually, in a, in a couple of hours, actually. So I will see you guys all later.